Hello, so this is a video on ranked choice voting and um, I'll get right to it so people don't disappear here. This is um, this is kind of a clickbait type statement in terms of saying ranked choice sucks and it's amazing, but um, it's actually true and I'm going to explain it um, very shortly here and show um, with details how it is true. Okay, so ranked choice voting is awful and it's amazing. How can both of those statements be true? Okay, so here's an example. Cars are amazing. Yes, that is true. But not that specific one. That's the 1970 Gremlin, considered one of the worst cars in uh, U.S. history. And video games are awesome. But not that one. That's the Atari um, 2600 ET, considered to be one of the worst video games ever made. <clears throat> so here's the here's how that applies to ranked voting. Ranked voting is a great way of voting. It's very good, but its name has essentially been hijacked. When you hear this name used in YouTube and on the internet and in news stories, it's not really um, it's not really as simple as they make it. So here's the thing. Ranked voting is a method where voters rank more than one candidate and beyond their first choice they can pick a second and a third and so on. It's a great way to see if a candidate has support beyond his primary supporters. Um, I think it's amazing and that's why ranked voting is amazing. Uh, the problem is that on the previous slide as that showed with the uh, game and the car, um, the specific voting that they're talking about is actually instant runoff voting. Um, there are many methods of doing ranked voting. There's a thing called Borda, there's instant runoff, there's Condorcet, and there's range voting. And um, every time you see one of these YouTube videos that talks about ranked voting, they're actually specifically talking about one specific type of it, which is the worst one of all of them, and that's called instant runoff voting. Um, instant runoff voting is the AMC Gremlin and the ET video game of uh, ranked voting. It's just awful. Okay, so that's the problem. Okay, so here's a, here are various methods of ranked voting. You can see them now. We've got um, Borda, Bucklin, and then uh, even with instant runoff voting, there's three varieties that's broken down. It's, one's called Hare, one's called Coombs, and one's called Carey. And then Condorcet has a few varieties. There's actually more than three, but I've listed three here. And then there's range voting. Um, and so the one in red, instant runoff voting hair, is the one that they're always referring to when they talk about ranked voting. Um, that is what they consider ranked voting. And like I say, it's not really true. Ranked voting is a type of voting with, very, with many different varieties. And the variety that they're always referring to, even though they don't call it that, is instant runoff voting. Okay, so here's a couple basics before we get. I show you why it's so awful. Okay, first thing, I understand Arrow's theorem. That basically says that like with a ranked method, there is no perfect method, um, you know, and that is true. But there are some methods that are much better and some that are much worse. It's like cars, you know, there's Corvettes and then there's AMC Gremlins. Um, you know, maybe there's no perfect car, but there are some cars better than others. And so it is with ranked voting. Um, you know, even though there is not one perfect ranked voting method, uh, instant runoff is one of the worst. Okay, so that gets us to how do we compare? Um, if an instant runoff vote says that, you know, candidate A wins and Condorcet says candidate B wins, how can we say who really wins? Well, I started playing around uh, with bar graphs. It's a very simple way of just looking at the entire, um, the entire vote and seeing very simply kind of who should win and who should lose. And we're going to look at that here. It's a very easy way to just kind of like level the playing field and see what's what. And in addition to that, like with a lot of these, you can like run the various methods and you'll see sometimes that instant runoff is the only one that picks like one certain winner and pretty much every other method is picking like something else. And that kind of also shows you that, hmm, that something is not right here that like, you know, 
all every other method is saying somebody else wins but you know this one method of instant running instant runoff picks it okay so here's an example where instant runoff did work and can work um, and it's the famous example of the Florida election in 2000 where uh, Ralph Nader they say basically you know flipped the tide for the state and Gore lost the state um, as you can see here um, Ralph Nader had 97,000 votes, and if they had instant running runoff voting in that state, um, pretty much all of those votes would have then gone to Al Gore, and Al Gore would have won the state. Um, there was less than 600 votes between Bush and Gore for that state. So if you know, if Nader was knocked out and they took those votes and split them up, uh, Gore absolutely would have won the state. So this is an ideal situation for instant runoff when you've got like three, possibly four candidates, um, but the bottom candidates are really low. Like it's not even really close. You can see it's like 48%, 48%, and then 1.6%. Um, you know, that's when it kind of can work okay. All right. So when you go beyond those specific situations, it really starts to suck. Um, the problem, in a nutshell, with instant runoff voting is that it does not look at the entire voting picture at the same time, which it could. Uh, it makes a huge error by only looking at the first place votes, even though you've already ranked all of them and you know the whole picture. And what it does is then it gets rid of the bottom candidate of the you know those primary votes. Well, the problem is, what if that candidate with the lowest number of first place votes had a huge number of second place votes? I mean, that's the whole point of this, actually, with ranked voting, is you're trying to see, like, oh, okay, beyond first place votes, you know, is there some support? And you could have a massive amount of support in second place, and it doesn't matter. If you have one, you know, if you're the bottom person for first place votes, you just get immediately axed. And with instant runoff voting, you, you don't even know that. You just, like, they dismiss it right from the get-go. They remove you. And you wouldn't even really know that that person had like a lot of support. So here's some examples. Okay, so here's a simple example with a graph. And I made it very simple so you can see A, B, C, and D. Um, obviously, you can look at this chart and see that A is the best candidate. I mean, there's no question. It's got the most first place votes and then second place votes and third place votes are tied with B and then it has the least amount of last place votes and you can see basically in this chart like a is the best candidate then b then c and d is the worst candidate uh, it's very simple to see from this graph like you're seeing all the information at one time well of course even though a should win uh, instant runoff voting picks b as the winner so already it's kind of, you can kind of be like uh, hmm, this is not good something is something is wrong with instant runoff voting when it's something this simple and it can't pick the right person next one okay so this is a, this is just this starts to show how bad it really gets in this election nobody hits the majority of 51 votes so instant runoff gets rid of the lowest candidate which is candidate a who has 18 votes um, however, if you look, you see that after those 18 votes, every other vote is a second place vote. So candidate A has nothing but first and second place votes. It's an amazing candidate. It's like clearly the best. And it has one less vote than C. And compare it to C. So C is the IRV winner. C has first, second, third, and fourth place votes. And the third and fourth place votes are actually more than half of the votes. So essentially, C is pretty much not liked very much by 63% of the voters. And A is pretty much liked by 100% of the voters. Um, in addition, A wins, as I said, all the other ones. It wins Buckland, it wins Borda, it wins range voting. In Condorcet, it, it's a Condorcet winner, which means it wins all four of its matchups. A beats B, A beats C, and A beats D in single matches. And if, in, in C, against C, the IRV matchup, it beat, I mean, it crushes it, 81 to 19. Just a complete beatdown. It, it's ridiculous that C would win this election. I mean, A is absolutely, you can see on the graph, like the clear winner. But 
IRV somehow cannot detect that. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, in the last slide, IRV had one more first place vote than the obvious winner, but in this case, it doesn't even have that. You can see it has less first place votes and less second place votes. So K here is the IRV winner. And you can see that K's first, second, and third place votes combined don't even add up to N's first and second votes. Um, you know, N has no last place votes. It has only first, second, and third place votes. And its quality of votes is just clearly much better than K. Um, like I say, once again, this one basically wins every single method and N does. Um, except for IRV. Once again, it's a Condorcet winner. It wins all three of its matchups. And once again, it crushes K, the IRV winner, 68 to 32. Um, K is arguably the last one that should be picked or possibly the second to last. But I mean, it's clearly in the bottom half. It's not the IRV winner. Not, not only is it first place, it's not even second place. It's either third or fourth place winner in this. Yet, once again, IRV picks it as the winner. Horrible choice. Okay, um, in this one, here's another example. This is some another new one. Okay, in this breakdown of the election, not only does it IRV not pick the best candidate, it literally picks the worst of all five candidates. Um, literally, plurality is a better candidate here, D. Like, the plurality candidate is a better candidate than the IRV one. Um, Far from being, and this is something they say, they say instant runoff voting will guarantee that the winner is at least kind of liked by the most, the majority. Well, that's completely untrue. You can see here that the instant runoff voting winner is actually disliked by 74% of the voters. Um, you can see it's got 49 last place votes and 25 fourth place votes. So it's got I mean, it's it's literally dis, disliked. It's just an awful candidate. It's only liked by 26%. It comes in first, and then the, all the rest of its votes are essentially at the bottom. Um, and it's funny, the way IRV works out here, it actually gets rid of the three best candidates first, A, B, and C. Uh, the, the final matchup is between D and E, which are the two worst ones. Um, it cuts the first three best. Um, once again, B, uh, if you look at the chart here, um, is a the winner, the best, probably the best one. You could even say A is not bad in a way, but um, A and B are pretty good. But B is a Condorcet winner. Once again, it wins all four of its pairwise matchups. It crushes the um, IRV candidate by 74 to 26. It's just not even close. Once again, our IRV is awful in this one. Okay, one final example of how bad it is. So this is ridiculous. In this one, it picks D as the winner. But if you reverse the rankings, you know, if you basically say to the, the people like, okay, now reverse your rankings and pick who the worst one is, like it still picks D. So in this instance, IRV picks the best and the worst candidate as D, which is ridiculous. You know, I mean, it just obviously sounds ridiculous. Um, the other methods pick A or B as the winner, which makes sense if you look at the graph, and then they all agree that E is the worst. I mean, if you look at this chart, you can see that E is the worst candidate. It's very bad. Um, and like I say, for some reason, when you use instant runoff voting, it says D is the best candidate, and it says D is the worst candidate. Um, it literally gets both of them wrong both times, and it does it with the same candidate. Um, 60% of the voters here, once again, uh, it's just disliked, dislike D. D's first, second, and third place votes combined don't even add up to C's first place votes. And even C is not the best choice here, but C is like the plurality winner. But um, in this case, once again, pl the plurality winner is like, and this is our current method, which is not even that great, is a better choice than the instant runoff voting one. Um, so just just awful. And here is uh, one last example. And this one is a pretty realistic one. This is basically showing you like um, if you were voting for five candidates and they're like center, left and right wing, and then far left and far right. 
Well, you can see on the chart here, basically far right and far left are the two worst ones to pick. They have pretty much 50% fifth place votes. They're just like very polarizing and like half the population just intensely dislikes them. Um, in the far left case, it's even got 17 fourth place votes. Um, so it's just really a bad candidate. Like the, the majority of people dislike it. And once again, instant runoff voting picks far left as the winner. Um, once again, it is picking the worst of all five choices. Uh, if you picked at random, you would have a better shot of picking the best candidate than using instant runoff voting here. Um, once again, the center candidate is basically a consensus candidate. It has the most first place votes and then it has all the rest are third place. Um, it wins all four of its matchups and by pretty good margins, as you can see on the left there on that chart. Um, the far left winner wins one matchup and it barely wins that one. It wins um, far left beats far right by 51 to 49. Um, its other three matches, it loses badly. So the center candidate is acceptable to everybody, and everybody would be okay with that. Instead, it picks the far left candidate, which um, basically, you know, is disliked by 66% of the voters. Two out of three voters do not like it and pick it as a bad, bad choice, and yet it wins. So... Um, Anyhow, that's it. That is why instant runoff voting is a horrible method. And it is sad that this is the method that is being pushed in YouTube and all these websites, and they're calling it ranked choice voting. And basically, they're giving ranked choice voting a bad name. So the thing is, I, I don't think people are doing this maliciously, but um, I think they just are not aware. People have not really studied this. They have not crunched the numbers. They have not given it a lot of thought or a lot of investigation. And they're picking a horrible method to, um, to use, and they just keep on calling it ranked choice voting. And um, like I say, it is technically ranked choice voting, but, you know, it's, it's ranked choice voting is many methods, and they are using this specific method called instant runoff. So please stay away from instant runoff voting. Don't use it. It's horrible. And um, hopefully some people will kind of see the light and look into other methods of ranked voting if, to, uh, if they want to start using this in state and, uh, you know, local elections. <laughs> and uh, my name is Darren, and that was my presentation. Thank you.